All right, how you doing today, boys and girls? Today we're going to take a look at section 4.2, which is applying congruence of triangles. And don't forget at the end of the video to make sure that you fill out and take the couple of questions survey, which the web address is right there for you. Now, I want to start this lesson off with a little bit of humor. That we'll get to at the end of the lesson later on. So, what do you call a politically correct angle? I don't know. Stay tuned, and soon you will find out. Now, let's take a look at what we've got to do today. First thing you want to take a look at are types of figures. See which ones are congruent, which ones are not congruent. Now, congruent angles always, always, always are going to be notated by certain ways, and congruent sides are going to be notated by this certain things, but what we want to take a look at picture-wise, congruent just means it's going to have the same size and the same shape. Not congruent stuff, different sizes, different shapes. Now when you write a congruent statement, it's always going to list the corresponding vertices in the same order. So that's going to be a really important thing as we get into our congruent statements here. So let's take a look at our first piece. Now, if you look at the corresponding angles, and you, if you notice in the diagram, we can see angle A has one angle marked by it. Now in the other triangle, in triangle DEF, that same angle is angle F. Moving on to the angle that has two angle marks, we've got angles B and E. And then lastly, we've got angle C and D, which each have three angle marks. So those are going to be our corresponding angles for our two triangles. Now, what we're going to take a look at next is going to be the triangle congruent statement. Now, this is just one of them. There's going to be a whole bunch more that we could write, but to get you started, let's just kind of go with one of them here. We're going to have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FED. Now, you have to be careful here. Make sure that you get the angles in the correct order because that's one of the things that's important when you write your congruent statement. Angle A goes with F, so they both are the first letters in the triangle. B and E go together, so they're in the middle letter spot for this congruent statement and then lastly we've got C and D and those two angles are located in the third spot so you always want to make sure that you get your corresponding angles paired up correctly and in the same spot the same locations when you go to write a congruent statement for a figure now lastly we're going to do the corresponding sides now it doesn't really matter which side you want to start with because if you noticed in our picture we've got side AB has got one line to it so if I take a look at the piece that on the other triangle DEF that has one hash mark that's going to be side FE and then I want to take a look at the side that has two hash marks and pair them together and the side that has three hash marks and pair them together so if you think you got it if you think you can do that go ahead and pair those together let's see what you got now hopefully you ended up with the same thing that I did now, if you switch the order around, you put B, A first, then make sure you have E before you write the F for segment F, E. Now, that's what we're going to do when we have to write corresponding sides. So again, the order matters, so just pay attention to those little pieces on it. Now, let's take a look at our first example. And what, what I want you guys to write down on your note sheet, I want you to write it just like this. We've got a congruent statement for the triangle. We've got to identify all pairs of congruent corresponding parts. So the congruent angles, I want you to start off with angle J, then K, then L. And go ahead and write down the corresponding angles that those three angles would be congruent to. Now when you take a look at this, angle J has got three hash marks. So over in the other triangle, the one that has three hash marks is angle T. And then angle K has got one hash mark in it, so that one is angle S. And then angle L has got two hash marks in it, two angle marks, so that is going to be angle R. How'd you guys do with that? Hopefully you did okay. Now for the next piece when we look at corresponding sides, one of the things that I like to do is highlight each one of the sides. That way it's easier for me to see which one is which. So go ahead and pause the video and get out three different highlighters or, or at least two and highlight the different sides the way I've got them highlighted here. And then that way it'll make things a lot easier to fall into place. So when you're done doing your highlighting, go ahead and hit pause and then uh, come on back and let's finish this up. All right, how'd you do? Now let's go ahead and take a look at our congruent corresponding sides and write our congruent segments for each one of them. So JK, you can see that that part's in a light blue and that's definitely gonna go with ST. 
KL, it's really easy to see which one that goes with, and the same thing for LJ. So when you're done, this is what you should have when you're all finished up. And it's really, really straightforward for you guys to see that. So that is the last piece on corresponding sides. Now we got to get after the congruent statements. And there's a whole bunch that you could write, and we're just going to kind of take a look at three of them real quickly. And these are the three that we're going to start out with. So go ahead and get your paper set up, write these ones down, and see if you can come up with the congruent statement for the name of the other triangle each one of these three would be congruent to. Go ahead and hit pause, write those down, try your luck, and come on back and see how you did. All right, how'd you do? Hopefully you got those three triangle statements correct. All right, if you did, give yourself a pat on the back. If not, what I want you to do is go back and take a look at the order of the ladder letters because that's right. Order matters. Dun, 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 dun. Order matters. Dun, 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 dun. You've got to have the triangles set up so that their congruent statements are in the same order for each triangle. So get it straight. Make sure that your congruent statement, you have the order correct. For both of them. Now, let's take a look at our several example here, number two. This one's a fun one. Check this out. Find the value of x, find the value of y, no big deal, but we've got this really complicated diagram here. We've got two different quadrilaterals. That's right, a four-sided shape, so we're going to talk a lot more about that later on in the year, but we've got these two shapes. Now, what I want you to do is go ahead and highlight the corresponding sides, because that's going to make things a lot easier for us. So, what I'm going to do first is go ahead and highlight, say, this DE side. Now, DE is the first two letters in my congruent statement, and the two letters that are the same there are the SP, so that's going to go right along here. So both of those are the same side. Next, I can go to my EF side. So EF is right here, and EF is going to go with the PQ part, so PQ is over here. And then I've got the FG piece, so FG is my bottom one right here and FG is going to be in the same spot as QR so that's actually going to be on my top one uh, in my second figure and then last but not least uh, I'm going to have this shape right here the DG, DG and then the RS part so all of those are going to be my corresponding pieces my corresponding sides now when I have that, it's kind of easy to see a little bit how I can, which pieces I'm going to have to use to set up to find the values for x and y. When I go to find the value of x, what I want to do is take a look at where is x located. Well, it, x is located in the QR segment and the same color or the same spot that is on my first figure, figure DEFG, is 12 feet. So all we need to do then is just set up this equation. 2x minus 4 is going to be equal to 12 because those are the corresponding sides that are equal. Solving for x, we're going to add 4 to both sides. We get 2x equals 16, and then using the division property of equality, we get x equals 8. So my value for x is just 8. Now the value for y, that one can get a little bit more complicated here because we're going to have to work with that a little bit. But what I want you to take a look at is where that is located in my figure to the right. I've got 6y plus x and if I take a look at where those two come together, where those two lines intersect, I've got like that magenta purpley kind of line and then the bluish kind of line where those two come together at angle Q on my figure on the right, the same spot in the figure on the left is angle F. So what I want to do is take those two parts and set them equal to each other. So I'm gonna have 68 is equal to the 6y plus x. Now for x, I already found that before, so I know that that much is 8. So I'm going to make that substitution using the substitution property of equality. So x is going to go out, y is going to come in. Then I just have to use other properties of arithmetic to go ahead and figure out uh, the value of y. So when I subtract 8, I end up with 60 equal to 6y. And then when I divide both sides by 6, I get 10 for the value of y. Now hopefully you followed that and you were able to go ahead and do that problem uh, along with us, but the highlighting really helps you see what uh, which pieces to set equal with each other. And That's all we had to do for example too, so if you followed all of that, man you're a rock star and give yourself a pat on the back for that. Now let's go on and check out example 3.
Now, for example three, we've got to find the measure of angle BDC. So one of the things I want to do is actually highlight that on my picture so I know exactly what it is I'm looking for. So angle BDC is going to be this spot right here. So I've got to do some stuff to kind of figure that out. Now, here's where we're going to do some deducing. Now, if I look where that 30 degrees is located, next to that spot, I've got these two little hash marks, which means anywhere else I see those two little hash marks, I can put 30 degrees. So what I want to do then is go ahead and note anywhere else that I could fill in that angle of 30 degrees. So 30 would go right here. Now also I've got angle A is labeled as 45 degrees and that's got one angle marking on it and so does this angle up here 45. So those are the only, that's the only information I can fill in at this point but to figure out the angle BDC I need more than uh, more than what I have. So I'm going to have to play around and do a little bit, bit of deducing. There's a couple different ways to do this and here's one of them. Now the missing angle, angle C and D. So I'm going to look kind of, I'm just going to draw this triangle separately here. If I take a look at this, I know this angle's 30, this angle's 30. So the missing angle up in here where angle N is that angle I can find using the triangle sum theorem. So 30 plus 30 is 60. For the two angles I have, if I do 180 minus 60, then I'll come up with 120. And it's obvious that it's not drawn to scale because that definitely looks not like an obtuse angle. But in either case, that angle is 120. So this angle that I just found right here is 120. Now the angle on the other side of that, so this piece that kind of goes along right here, that angle, because the two of them would have to make a linear pair, that angle's got to be 60. So then right in here, I know this angle then would be 60. Hmm. Now, what I'm going to do then is just kind of take a look at, I'm going to use a different color for this, I'm going to just take a look at part of it, this triangle. So let's see what we have here. I know this angle's 60. I found where angle B is. We know that that's 45, so here's N right here. And the other piece of angle D, again, I'm going to use triangle sum theorem to help me figure this out. 60 plus 45 is 105. So if I do 180 minus 105, that'll give me 75. So this angle right here is 75. So where 75 is, now I've got all the pieces of information I need to figure out how much angle BDC is because all I'm going to do is just add up the 75 with the 30 and that'll give me my sum. So the measure of angle BDC is just going to be 30 plus 75 gives me a grand total of 105. That was a lot of stuff. We couldn't just get that straight right up off the bat. So that's uh, one of the things you'll have to make sure that you do. Sometimes you're going to have to play around a little bit and make some deducing. But just look at the diagram. Use the information you're given and you got this. You're going to have to sometimes, and that's that one technique, pull the triangles apart. Draw only the pieces you need and that way that will help you out when you go to solve this type of problem. Now. Here comes a second technique that some people might use, and this, again, it just totally depends on the way your brain thinks. So if that last one, if you could follow that, that's good. Um, but here might be a different technique that will help some of you guys. Again, we're, trying to, we're just trying to find angle BDC. We're trying to figure out how much that is. But what some people might do is they might look here in this area. They might take a look at that and use some properties that they know about how many degrees there are in a circle. So we're going to take a look at that area as we go through to solve this problem. Now, kind of working on the same premise as before, uh, we'll take the one triangle and we'll um, kind of draw it out like this, our CDN triangle. So this part's 30. Now the other angle over here, so this is D, C, and then N is up here that part's also 30 and then they know when we figure this the missing angle out 30 and 30 is 60 subtract that from one from 180 and again we get 120 so they figure out this angle to be 120 but then what they think about is they're like well this vertical angle over here has to be 120 so the way that their brain your brain might think about it is you might take a look at that whole section right there 
and then try and find these missing angles right here. And so the, the way that they'll think about it is they'll do 360 minus 120 plus 120 gives us 240. So when we subtract those two, we will end up with 120 degrees. So, so that's how much both of the angles are together uh, that are left, that where those two blue dots are. But So what you have to remember to do is then divide that by 2, and that will give us 60 degrees. So then they figure out that this angle right in here is 60 degrees. Now we're still trying to find this missing angle over where angle NDB is. So we know that piece is 60, so again we're just going to kind of draw a little one of the smaller triangles. We're going to draw this triangle right here uh, where we've got B and then the D and then the N. Now we just figured out this part was 60. If we look at triangle uh, where angle A is, A is 45 and that's got one hash mark so again we know that this piece would be 45 and again we'll just use our triangle sum theorem 60 plus 45 is 105 so if we do 180 minus 105 we'll get 75 degrees for this angle right here. Now we've got all the information we need to to figure out how much angle BDC is so both techniques will get you there it's just a matter of which one your brain sees and which one you kind of want to uh, work with. But either way, when you're done, don't forget to go back and answer the question. Measure of angle BDC is 105 degrees. So those are two different techniques for finding angle three, the measure of angle BDC. Some people might prefer the first technique. Some might prefer the second technique. It's totally the way your brain sees it. But make sure you show your work to justify your reasoning. Now, for this part, most of you are just going to hit pause and copy these pieces down because these are uh, going to be similar properties that you've already seen before for segments or angles or um, our algebra properties. And now, same kinds of things are just going to apply for a congruent triangle. So go ahead and hit pause and then uh, copy these pieces down. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to our joke. Applying congruent triangles, what do you call a politically correct triangle? Now, before I give you the answer, make sure that you don't forget fill out your survey. Now the answer, what do you call a politically correct angle? If you noticed at the beginning of the video, which way did my head turn? To the right. If you picked up on that subtle little hint, good for you. If not, go back to the beginning and see if it happened. Make sure you complete your survey and I will see you guys later on in class. Have a great day. Peace.